Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to show you guys a few of my older laptops. Uh, I know you guys have already seen maybe the Dell Latitude, the Fujitsu, the HP Envy Beats that I've shown in my other videos, but uh, I haven't shown you guys these laptops yet. These are some of my other older laptops. Um, this one is a MacBook Pro Retina 13 inch from 2012. I bought it in October 2012 and uh, it's been mostly used for programming. Like I take it to coding competitions, hackathons, etc. As some people know, um, OS X or Mac OS is better for programming than for Windows because Mac OS is based on Unix, whereas Windows has its own kind of shell. So it's uh, faster for compiling, faster for programming, basically. So um, yeah, that's why a lot of programmers, including me, like to use Mac OS for doing that. Uh, but yeah, this is the MacBook Pro Retina 13 inch. Um, I don't really use it that much anymore because my company gave me a MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch, which is uh, from 2014, and that one is more, more powerful, so I use that one more. Um, so I should probably sell this one, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, it has still has a lot of my old uh, programming stuff on it, but yeah, I like this MacBook still. Uh, the keyboard and stuff is, um, is better. You know, the new MacBook Pros came out, and uh, they came out with, I think, they came out the new butterfly design keyboard, which I don't really like. I still like the old keyboard with um, these keys have more travel to them and stuff. And I don't like the large touch uh, touchpad or trackpad here. It really, um, it's just too large on the new MacBook Pros and no glowing logos on the new ones, of course, and lack of ports on the new ones. They just have USB-C, which means you have to carry around dongles and stuff. And that completely defeats the purpose of being portable. You know, why would I have to carry like dongles everywhere I go? It's really annoying. But uh, this 2012 model still has all the ports that you would expect. Um, you have, of course, MagSafe. Rest in peace, MagSafe. You don't have that anymore on the new MacBooks. Let me get it focused there. Yeah, you don't have that on the new MacBook Pros anymore. It's so sad. Uh, we have two Thunderbolt ports here, which is uh, really good for displaying or outputting video. Any of those things. Uh, USB port, good old USB-A. Headphone jack. All right, on this side we have the full-size SD card slot, which does not come on the new MacBook Pros, which is really sad. Full-size HDMI also does not come on the new MacBook Pros, and USB-A, which uh, also does not come on the new MacBook Pros. So yeah, as you guys can tell, I don't like the new MacBook Pros. I want to stick with the old MacBook Pros. The, um, they're just they're fine for me. Like they're they're still pretty light. They're still really thin, and uh, they have more ports. Uh, better keyboard, in my opinion. So I'm gonna keep that uh, for now. I'm not sure what I want to do with this one, but um, anyways, that's my MacBook Pro Retina, 13 inch. Uh, then I have my Lenovo X240. This one's been beaten up a little bit, as you can see. I've used this one a lot. Uh, this one runs Windows 7 still. I don't want to upgrade this one yet. I want to keep some notebooks with Windows 7 so I can run some legacy programs on it. Uh, but yeah, you guys have seen this one before. Um, I added a Korean keyboard stickers on it so I can type in Korean better. Um, this is the uh, 2014 model, of course, so it doesn't have the, you know, the new X1 Yoga that I have has the physical trackpad buttons. This one has it built into the touchpad, which, which isn't as good. You know, like it's harder to click and everything. So a lot of people didn't like that. That's why they reverted back. But uh, this 2014 models, they have it this kind of controversial trackpad change here. Keyboard is of course awesome. ThinkPad keyboards are awesome. Um, fingerprint reader is awesome. I really customize this one. This one has a lot of cool features going for it. It's a 12 inch um, headphone jack, USB port, SD card slot, and a SIM card slot so you can actually roam with this one. It has 4G LTE on it and full size Ethernet. VGA port, USB A smart card reader, and a mini display port there. So it has all the ports you need except for HDMI, maybe. But um, I think I would prefer display port over HDMI most of the time, anyway. So, anyways, that's the Lenovo uh, X240 right there. Still really good 12 inch laptop, still has a Core i7. 8 gigs of RAM, SSD, still really uh, 
runs amazingly. And yeah, the swappable battery is really cool too. It has two batteries. You can swap this one out, hot swap it, because it has two inter one internal battery, one external battery. So you can swap this one out, put another battery in. Having a laptop with a removable battery is really awesome, especially for portability. Though this one is pretty hefty for with the extended battery. It's like 3.6 pounds, which is quite hefty for a 12 inch, which is why I uh, usually use my X1 Yogana or my Dell Latitude 7370. I forgot to mention that my MacBook Pro also has a Core i7, 256 gig SSD and uh, 16 gigs of RAM here. So um, it really is, I wanted to have the larger amount of RAM because I was going to do programming on it and when you're running VMs and compiling and stuff, you need to have a lot of RAM. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, I don't use this one that much anymore. Uh, this one's mostly just, and this one I don't use that much anymore either. I keep these ones in storage usually. These days I use my X1 Yoga or my Dell Latitude 7370, which both of which I reviewed, uh, instead of these ones, and my MacBook Retina 15 inch for my company instead. There's one more laptop I want to show you guys, and this one I got in also 2014. This is the HP EliteBook uh, Revolve uh, 810. This is the Generation 2, I believe. Yep, so um, this one is an 11 incher, so you have this one 12 incher, 13 incher, and you have 11 incher, the baby. Uh, this one is fairly light, 3 pounds. I think this one might be the lightest out of all these. This is 3.6. The MacBook Retina is like 3.2 or 3.3 or something. This is only 3 pounds. Probably the lightest, though still not as light as my X1 Yoga or my Dell Latitude um, 7370, but it's still um, still fairly light, I guess. And yeah, this one also runs Windows 7. I want to keep some... I want to keep some laptops running Windows 7 and have a lower resolution. This one only has a 720p resolution. The reason is because Sometimes I have some legacy programs or games I want to review or do let's plays of and those games don't run well on high resolutions or on Windows 10. So I still want to keep around some older operating systems and uh, lower resolutions so it has better compatibility with legacy programs on it. Um, but yeah, this laptop is... So my X240, also running Windows 7, also 720p screen. This one's the same. I use one either one of these laptops for running uh, older games on it. Or older programs. Uh, keyboard is really nice. I think I've said it in my Dell Latitude video. I really like business laptops because first of all is you can find them cheaply on eBay if they're refurbished. You can find them like at a 60% or 70% discount in some cases because a lot of companies when they uh, change over to the new models they sell off the old models which are not really even that. Um, they, they sell a lot of refurbished older models. You know, that are not really even used that much and they sell at a heavy discount so you get really great value for them uh, secondly they're reliable they're uh, really durable um, a lot of them has been uh, military spec tested you know the thinkpads latitudes and elite books have always have all been uh, military uh, spec tested so they're really reliable um, I think this one has a spill proof keyboard some of them do that if you, even if you spill some water on them or whatever it's totally fine uh, not, it's not water resistant by the way, it's just that if you the keyboard itself, it's, if you spill some water or juice or whatever, it's fine, you can clean it up. So that's nice to have. Um, and yeah, just uh, a lot of them have pretty good, pretty decent specs and um, a lot of good ports. Like business laptops always have really good ports, so I want to keep um, some business laptops handy. That's what I prefer, I don't like consumer laptops as much. That's why all my laptops is either MacBooks business laptops or gaming laptops like the Alienware because they have more premium design and um, build quality. So yeah, the keyboard's really good. Um, it's not quite as good as the ThinkPads, but it's uh, definitely better than the new MacBook Pros. <laughs> and I would say it's about equivalent to my MacBook Pro Retina. The keyboard's pretty good. Or my Dell Latitude might be slightly better, but yeah. Still pretty good. The trackpad is a pretty small one, but it's wide. It's a wide trackpad here. Um, this one's a Core i5 processor. Only only has 128 gigs SSD and um, 8 gigs of RAM. That's because I don't really need the, this one to be powerful. It's only used for run for mostly running legacy applications. It is a convertible, which means that it has a touchscreen and you can rotate it like this. 
uh, twist style. This is a very older style of doing um, convertibles. So before, uh, before Windows 8 came out, before all these hybrid laptops came out, Microsoft had the Windows XP Tablet Edition. And yeah, the Windows XP Tablet Edition, which a lot of convertibles, older convertibles used. So this was before uh, capacitive touchscreens and Windows 8 came out. So they all use this twist style of, twist style of screen. Um, I think you might have seen it on my Fujitsu P1630. But it's this uh, older twist twist style, which is has its ups and downs. The the down is that this hinge right here, if it's not if it's not um, that sturdy, then this can be a problem because this is basically a single point of failure. If this hinge here ever gets damaged then um, it's pretty much game over, but fortunately this is an elite book, so this hinge is, this hinge is very, very sturdy here. This being a, a business laptop and all, it should be sturdy. Um, this is one of the few newer laptops that use this design. There's not a lot of laptops that use this design anymore. Most of the convertibles these days, I think like 90% of them, use either the um, hybrid style where you de detach the tablet from the dock, as in the Microsoft Surface Pro, um, or or the Microsoft Surface Book, they do that. Or you have the the yoga style, like the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga, that um, you can completely fold it uh, all the way, like all the way across 360 degrees. Uh, the HP Spectre X360 does that. Um, a lot of laptops do that. Um, but this style is not that common anymore. But I still like this style because the fact that you can rotate it almost any way you want, like you can rotate it on the side here halfway, you can rotate it full way. You can lay it f flat down, you know, you can bend it like this, like pretty much at any angle you can see it. It's very, very easy. It's, it's a little bit more flexible than the yoga style, I think, in my opinion anyways. I know that you can't like put it into tent mode or whatever they call it. I never use that mode anyway, but the stand mode is pretty much just this. The tablet mode is just this, so whatever, the t this, this style is pretty good for me. All right, so enough talking about the style. Uh, we can get on to the ports here, the port selection, this being a convertible, the power button's on the side here. So the power button, um, they have, uh, I haven't tested this button yet, it might be the Wi-Fi. Um, this one is the volume rockers on the side because it's a uh, convertible. Then you have a docking station port and a headphone jack right here. On the back you have full-size Ethernet, USB uh, 3, lock slot. Full size display port. This is really rare to see, especially on an Ultrabook. I haven't seen this this very very often on anything actually. Even my Alienware has a mini display port, but this is a full size display port, which is pretty awesome to see on a laptop. Uh, this is another USB three port and a charger, and nothing on the side, just fans. So, um, oh, and one more thing is the uh, micro SD. Yeah, there's actually a micro SD card slot here. So that's Pretty cool, um, interesting. I think some people may, may prefer the full size SD card slot, but whatever. I think most of the time we use micro SDs these days, anyways. Full size SDs are not really as common anymore. But yeah, anyways, guys, that's it. That's my HP Elite Book, which uh, I also use for legacy applications. Also very light and portable. Then you have my uh, Dell, my ThinkPad. Yeah, my ThinkPad X240, and you have my MacBook Retina. So yeah, guys, that's it. That's my uh, two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old laptops. The HP EliteBook, uh, Revolve 810, the Apple MacBook Retina 13, and the Lenovo ThinkPad X240. I also want to show you guys something else that's not a laptop, but I think might also belong in this video. This is the Mobile Monitor 2 Go, and I've shown this one a little bit in my Razor Edge review. But um, I can show you guys more in depth here. This is a portable monitor. Yes. So guys, um, you know that when you have a monitor at home or whatever, whatever, they're really heavy. Like the 19 inch, 24 inch monitors, they're really heavy. Obviously, you can't really bring it anywhere if you want a second monitor with you. Right? So say you want to go to like a hackathon programming competition or your friend's house and you just need a second display. You need a second monitor for your computer. Well, this is what uh, this thing is for. Um, it's... A portable monitor and it weighs about three pounds I think it's about the same as my elite book yeah it weighs about three pounds and it folds up and it's convertible so you have that same kind of twisting swiveling display both sides you can 
have it any way you want. You can have it like flat down, whatever. It can become a tablet if you want, like this. So it's very, very versatile. So if you're doing presentations or whatever, you can just leave it like that, leave it on the stand mode or whatever. It's very versatile. Um, so this company is Mobile Monitor Technologies. Um, I think you can find this on Amp. You can find this for about two hundred or three hundred dollars. So brand new, it's like four hundred. But you can probably find it cheaper now. I bought this like three years ago, so it was, it's a long time ago. Um, but yeah, there's three different versions. There's the Full HD version, which I have here, the 1080p version. There's also a 900p version and um, 720p version as well. But this is the Full HD version, which also has stereo speakers with it too. It's made of all aluminum. As you can see, it's all aluminum, so it pairs very well with Apple products like MacBooks and stuff. Uh, I, you know, often use this with the uh, MacBook Pro Retina, and it, it pairs very well with that. See, so aluminum on aluminum, you have this as a second display for your MacBook Pro. Um, this slot down here is for your iPad. I haven't really, I, did, I don't really use it with the iPad, but you can put your iPad down here and display it here. It's more convenient, I guess. That's why I have a holder for it. Um, but yeah, 15 inch screen, full HD. Uh, it's not IPS, I believe, unfortunately, but probably not for the, the purposes that you would use this for. You would need IPS. And um, display link. So this is the technology used to com connect to Macs and uh, Windows. Is You just connect to it, this one to it. It should automatically detect. And um, on Macs, I think it's display link. I think Windows just works as a normal monitor. You have, uh, maybe you guys can't see it that well, but you have brightness controls right here. And volume controls for this stereo speakers. On the side here, you have a mini USB port. Might be used for updating, I think. Haven't really used that one. Power button right here. Uh, AC adapter port. And then weird location for the HDMI, but it's on the corner here. Yeah, so you put your HDMI connection here. And this can connect to anything. It's not just computers. You can connect it to your gaming console. You can connect it to your um, your phone, your tablet, anything that has HDMI, you can connect it. So you can play your PlayStation and Xbox it, with it if you want. And then on this side, it's also USB host, so you can plug in two USB devices here, like a keyboard or a mouse or flash drive, and it'll work. It's also USB host. I think that's mainly what the power is for. Um, and then you have the headphone jack right here. So uh, yeah, and you can use this several ways. Uh, there's a kickstand right here, which is the way I prefer to use it. You can just put on your kickstand and then you can just uh, display it like, actually, turn this display around. Yeah, you, d you would display it like this. Yeah, like that. And that works. You can also, instead of using the, the kickstand here, which is very, very generous, it goes like all the way out. Instead of using kickstand, you can also just do it normal convertible way and just light flat like this as well. There's a number of ways you can use it. But um, anyways, yeah, this is a portable monitor you can use to take with you uh, anywhere you need a, an extra display. And um, yeah, folds up. So some of you guys may want that. Uh, you, you may want to carry an extra monitor around with you, then this thing is pretty decent, pretty good. It comes with a carrying case as well. So uh, yeah, that, that's it. That's Mobile Monitor to Go by MMT and MacBook Pro Retina, X240, and uh, HP EliteBook. And that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and subscribe if you like these kind of videos.